Hey everybody, this is Ryan with The Smart House, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, this is going to be just a quick project, uh, something that you should be able to get done probably in 10 minutes total. We're gonna to, Today we're going to create a task light for kids. Um, this could be used for adults as well if you had to, but uh, uh, basically a few months ago my five-year-old son started to wake up extra early in the morning. He's always been an early riser, but he started to wake up at 4, 4.30 five o'clock in the morning and want to get up and go downstairs. Well, we didn't really think that it'd be good for him to go do that that early. We really can't read a clock right now. So what we ended up coming up with was creating an automated light that would tell him when he can go downstairs. In addition, he was looking for a night light that was um, something that we could turn on and off automatically. So uh, I had the idea to go ahead and take a RGB smart light and turn it into a task light for him. So how it works, we set a time, uh, so say 5.45 in the morning or six in the morning and the light turns on and turns green, letting him know that he can go ahead and head downstairs and get some breakfast. Uh, in addition, at around 7.30 at night, that light turns on to a nice soft, warm light color is ready for to be used as a night light. So the light stays on basically from 7.30 at night all the way till what time we have set in the morning and the light will turn back on again at uh, green, turn bright, and let him know that if he is awake, um, he can go ahead and head downstairs. If not, he just sleeps through the light and then he knows when he wakes up, he's ready to go. So in today's video, uh, we're gonna be doing most of the work inside of Home Assistant and um, I'll be showing you on the video how to do it, do the automations in Node-RED. Um, you can also do them in YAML if you want to and I will link some sample code on the, um, but for now, um, in the video, I'll just kind of take you through the Node-RED because that's a little bit more visually appealing. Um, and for my system, I'm using one of these RGB uh, LED bulbs from Ikea, the Trajafi uh, bulbs. I like them because they're cheap and I can go get them from the store. You can use any RGB LED, um, either bulb or strip if you wanted to. Um, I just so happen to have these. Uh, these bulbs can be connected either to a Hue Hub, the Trajafi Hub from Ikea, or in my case, I have them connected via the Zigbee to MQTT bridge. You can also use a Wi-Fi bulb. Um, the, the key aspect is it has to be compatible with Home Assistant and it has to be controllable inside of Home Assistant. The other uh, requirement, of course, is Home Assistant itself. Um, I'll be using my uh, what's formerly known as Hast.io, uh, but it is now called Home Assistant um, base off my Raspberry Pi. And then you'll need whatever the hub is that connects the bulb to Home Assistant. So the steps I'll be going through, the first thing I'll do is I'll show you what, what the prerequisites are for Home Assistant. You need to install a couple of components into your Home Assistant configuration to get some of the nice front end GUI items. Uh, I won't show you how to set up the bulb because I'll be assuming you already have the bulb set up and that differs so wildly depending on what you're using. Um, I'll show you how to import the automation. Um, I've got the automation spelled out on a blog post that's attached to the video at the bottom. Um, so you can go there and import that code. I'll show you how to import the code into Node-RED and then update all the entity IDs and get it set up and test it so you can see it happening. It should be pretty easy. It's a fairly straightforward project. So let's get started. So as I covered in the requirements, we need to use the input date time integration to create a field that you can fill in with a time of day. So as per the documentation here on the screen, you can see that um, there are really two options that you can make with a input date time. Uh, you can either choose if it has a date or if it has a time or both. So in my case, I'm going to be using the time true date false. Um, so this is just a, a addition to your configuration.yaml that you need to insert. It's pretty simple. Uh, just the input date time colon the name of your particular variable, its friendly name that will be displayed on screen, and then one of those two options. So I'll flip over to my code here real quick. So this is my configuration.yaml. You can see in my configuration, I just have a new entry called input daytime. I have two variables, one called Liam Wake, and one called Liam Nightlight. Now, um, I gave it a friendly name that will show up in the interface, and then I've set them both to has date false, has time true. So it's as simple as adding that into your configuration, saving and updating it, and then restarting Home Assistant. So now I flipped over to my Home Assistant instance, and you'll see down here I have two variables, one called Liam Wake Up Time and one called Liam's Nightlight, and these have a time associated with them. So now all you have to do is you can click into the hour and minute field to set these variables. These will act 
as the time variables to turn on our lights. So now let's switch over to Node-RED and I'll show you how the code works for the Node-RED portion. All right, so real quick, I'll show you how to import a piece of code that you may find online to into Node-RED. Um, so on the link posted in the comments uh, and below uh, is linked to my blog post that has this code on here. Um, basically, it's just a snippet of code that you can uh, import into Node-RED and that will automatically create the blocks for you. So just triple click or uh, control A to copy this block of text. Switch over to um, switch over to your Node-RED. Go up into the options button in the top right. Go to import. And then you can import from clipboard. So just paste in the code into this field and then click import. And then you'll see the blocks attached to your mouse. So then you can click um, in to drop those into whichever flow that you want to do that. And then we can start customizing them. And I'll kind of go through how this portion of the automation works. But I'll go through each step here. It's pretty simple. Um, I did find this in the Home Assistant forum. So a big thanks to the users over there. Uh, it's a pretty simple piece of code. Uh, basically, you start off with over here, you have a, a timestamp. And this timestamp, the only thing difference between the default timestamp and what this one is, is it repeats every one minute. Uh, so effectively what this does is it, in, it injects um, every minute, it lights up and, and pushes to the next state. And then this function checks to see if, it, if the current timestamp matches the time you've defined in Home Assistant. So opening up the code here, and I'll make it full screen so it's easier to see. Um, the only important parts you need to focus on is this variable here. Um, this is the one you'll obviously have to customize for your Home Assistant instance. Uh, but as you saw, it's the same name as the one I defined, the Liam Wake input date time. Because um, what it's going to do basically is define that constant as alarm. Then it's going to check now, you know, the, the hour and the minute against now. And if it does match, then it's going to return the message and it's going to push the output. If not, it's just going to ignore it and then end there. The only thing that if you'd like to have multiple outputs, you can define a second or third output and then have it return that particular output number. So that way you could do this on one bit of code. Um, so as soon as that, um, there's a match between the current timestamp and the time you've defined in Home Assistant, then it's just going to turn on a, uh, it'll do a service call node, which in this case, it's just a light turn on to find the entity ID here, which you'll have to customize this to your entity ID and then change the color name to green. So if you wanted to, you could set it to an RGB color, um, a specific color name like I have defined here, a color temperature, white value. You can even set the brightness or the brightness percentage um, just by changing the data in here using the XML code. So that's done. Uh, you can hit deploy. And then the next time that you have a the timestamp set, you should have that light turn on. So pretty simple bit of code here that really allows you to uh, very quickly create a time in your home assistant here, basically creating um, a defined time to turn on that light. So you'll see here the node red automation that I use for that lamp. There's the original one that we showed you in the example um, where it turns the lamp green. We also have the one that uses the uh, nightlight timestamp to turn on the lamp and turn it to warm white. And then I just have a standard uh, timer to shut it off at uh, 7.30 a.m. There's the complete code that's available. Um, you can obviously customize it any way you'd like. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that's easy. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. I try to be active in the comments. Uh, it may take me a couple of days to get to things. But um, please let me know if you have questions or any suggestions for enhancements. Um, as I said in the video, there are other methods. You can uh, do drop downs for colors if you wanted to, or you can add more timers to change it during the day to different times. Um, so if you'd like me to do a video on that, let me know. I can do a part two to this uh, with some enhancements for that as well. Um, again, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please add them to the comments below. Hopefully everybody's staying busy and safe during this quarantine time. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I will hopefully be doing more content on a more frequent basis. It's really hard to record videos when you have twin children, um, babies, so they just turned one. Hopefully we're going to get a little more time um, to get these videos done. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.